Hey there friends and welcome back to another episode of Back to Basics where we're all about trying to reduce the amount of unnecessary harmful chemicals being absorbed into our body by exposing these toxic ingredients and finding natural alternatives. A typical part of our daily hygiene routine includes some type of deodorant or antiperspirant. But what's the difference and do you really need it? Also, what are the scariest ingredients you absolutely must avoid? The answers and some incredible natural solutions coming up. Before we get into the ingredients, it's important to know that living mindfully and making conscious decisions where we can is extremely valuable, not only to our health, but in the protection of the workers mining these ingredients, the air we breathe, the ozone layer, as well as the planet and environmental waste that's caused by the manufacturing and packaging of these products. In my research preparing for this episode, I came across a bunch of random interesting facts about sweat, like horses sweat from their armpits too. Hippos sweat, but their sweat is red in color and actually works as a sunscreen. How genius is that? Also, if your partner's sweaty smell is captivating, don't worry, it's not weird. You've got chemistry, which is actually really biology working through hormones. Since women can detect masculine hormones through sweat and men can literally smell a woman's fertility. And I'm going to link the study to that in the description box if you want to read more up on that. If you enjoy these facts like me, then thumbs up this video so I know I'm not the only one spending the last hours of the night googling random sweat facts. So we actually have two types of sweat glands, Echerin, which is all over the body and basically excludes salty water. This is your body's natural way of releasing excess heat. Then there's the epocrine glands, which are activated after puberty at hair follicles instead of pores. And these secrete a composition of fatty proteins, lipids, ammonium, and other organic compounds. These are usually under the arms and in the groin area. While women actually have more sweat glands, men sweat twice as much as women. Now, sweat on its own is odorless. It's actually the bacteria that feeds off the sweat that causes the stink. But here's where it gets interesting. A study in the Journal of Investigative Dermatology, scientists found a gene called ABCC11. Now, this is the gene that determines whether your sweat will have an odor. While only 2% of Europeans lack the genes for smelling armpits, most East Asians and almost all Koreans lack this gene. Having that said, 3 quarters of the people that don't need deodorant still use it. And that goes to show you how much of a person's daily life is dictated by what's considered normal. So if you don't need it, skip it. If you do, no worries. We'll be going over a few ingredients that you'll want to watch out for. Just a quick throwback on this $72.2 billion industry that didn't even exist 100 years ago. In fact, the first deodorant was marketed and sold in the 1920s. And today, we find multiple antiperspirants and deodorant products in every household. So what's the difference, you may ask? Although often used interchangeably, antiperspirants work by closing or blocking the pores with astringents like aluminum, so you can't actually release sweat. Deodorants, on the other hand, don't stop you from sweating. They work by neutralizing the smell of the sweat with antiseptic agents. Manufacturers can label antiperspirants as deodorant if they also contain antiseptics. However, just a quick look at the ingredients will tell. If it contains any aluminum compounds, it is by the legal definition an antiperspirant, which shockingly makes up 82% of the market. So obviously comes first on the list of ingredients to avoid. Aluminum compounds can come under different names, and they work by stopping our body's natural biological function of cooling itself down and secreting toxins by clogging sweat glands. Now, this goes against logic, and yet the biggest brands in the industry continue to use documented carcinogens to do so. The bigger concern with these is that it gets absorbed into our skin and goes into our bloodstream, causing changes in estrogen receptors. By clogging the sweat glands, toxins build up in the lymph nodes, and that's why it's related to breast cancer. And while studies haven't been conclusive, research has also associated high levels of aluminum to Alzheimer's disease, so definitely best to be avoided. You should also be watching out for triclosan. This chemical compound was initially introduced for the use in surgical scrub for its 
antibacterial and antifungal properties. It shortly made its way into the personal care industry. The problem is, is that it kills both good and bad bacteria, which weakens our immune system over time. This ingredient is so commonly used that the Journal of Immunology published that 75% of Americans have detected triclosan levels in their bloodstream. I'll also link in the description another study that reported triclosan can disrupt the bacterial growth in your gut and impair your thyroid function, which is crucial for brain development. Moving on to stearis, which can be listed under many names. So if you see any of these ingredients on your deodorant, just put it back. While stearase work as an emulsifying agent to combine and thicken ingredients, the concern comes from the manufacturing of this compound, where stearic acid, which is pretty safe on its own, is combined with ethylene oxide, which is a known carcinogen. Another reason to avoid this ingredient is it being an eco-hazard. As it enters the waterways when disposed, it can cause significant damage to the natural environment. I believe there's absolutely no need to use chemical emulsifiers since there's so many natural alternatives like candelilla wax. The same goes for the use of parabens, talic, propylene glycol, DEA, TEA, fragrance, artificial colors, which are all common ingredients in deodorants and antiperspirants. And I know it can be overwhelming, but trust me, it's just getting into the habit of being mindful when choosing products and taking a second to check the ingredients. And no worries, there are a ton of natural alternatives that your body and the environment will thank you for. Try a crystal salt deodorant. You can also find natural deodorant free of these toxins like Green Tidings, Humble also has a clean deodorant, there's another deodorant by Schmitz, It's All Good, and Paperweight. So know that there are always some natural green alternatives. And if you want to have some fun with it, let's make our own. Now the first ingredient is hopefully something you can pull straight out of your kitchen cabinet and that is coconut oil. So mine's right now is liquid because it is a super hot day in California. Yours might be solid at room temperature and you can always just um, melt that in the microwave when you need to use it. And so the reason I love using coconut oil is it's a great moisturizer. It also contains vitamin E, essential amino acids, it contains luric which is great for your skin barrier function. And what makes it so great for using in a deodorant recipe is that it actually has antimicrobial properties. Alongside with that we're going to be using shea butter. Now shea butter is made from the nuts of the shea tree and it's loaded with vitamins and it's going to add a rich smoothness to our mixture as well as thicken it up and add some moisture. To solidify our deodorant, we're going to be using candelilla wax from the candelilla sure plant. So it's a great alternative for beeswax and it's going to help emulsify the ingredients together. Of course, our recipe would not be complete without sodium bicarbonate, aka baking soda. So this is a natural mineral from springs and it definitely has detoxifying properties. It can help neutralize the acidic or alkaline levels. So deodorizing is one of the most effective properties of baking soda because it's ability to absorb odors. We'll also need some arrowroot powder. Now, if you don't have it, you can always use cornstarch. This is going to make our concoction silky smooth. As well as being a thickening agent, arrowroot powder enables active ingredients to penetrate the upper levels of our skin. So it's got great moisture absorbing qualities. The last ingredient is optional if you'd rather have an unscented deodorant. But feel free to use a few drops of your favorite essential oils. Preferably something with antibacterial properties like tea tree oil, lavender oil is a great one. All also peppermint, rosemary, lemongrass. Today I'm going to be using lavender oil. So let's get this mixture started. So while mixing all of these ingredients, we're going to need some source of heat. So if you have a double boiler, you can use that. I'm just using a bowl that's got very hot water in it. And I'm going to set a measuring cup inside. And then I'm going to be putting all my ingredients in here to melt. So now that I have my DIY double boiler, I'm going to take a third cup of coconut oil. So you want one third cup of coconut oil in there. And let's see, we need a tablespoon. Then we're going to add two tablespoons of shea butter. Just 
shea butter. And then you can just rub this all over your hands because it's very moisturizing. And I'm going to take also three spoons of candle lila wax. And the wax is really what takes the longest to melt. So there we go, two and three. Actually, candelilla wax kind of reminds me of nutritional, chunky nutritional yeast. So you're just gonna wanna whisk it, whisk it until they're all melted together. Now I'm not sure, but I bet this would also work if you put it in the microwave as well. So once you've got everything melted, you're gonna take this off the heat. And then again, we're gonna use our third cup measure because we need a third cup of arrowroot powder or cornstarch, whatever you have available. So now that we're mixing in our dry ingredients, I'm gonna add the baking soda. I'll be using two tablespoons, but if you have sensitive skin, you can reduce it to one tablespoon. So there we go, one and two. Wonderful. And then again, this step is optional, but it's definitely wonderful to include. So I'm gonna be adding 10 drops of essential lavender oil. And then we're just gonna give that all a good stir. So now we have this nice, thick, creamy concoction. You can reuse any um, old deodorant you have and just twist it all the way down, fill it up with the mixture, and it actually solidifies at room temperature. So you can leave it outside, you can put it in the fridge if you're in a hurry, um, but you can just put it in and then as you twirl it out, it is gonna come out solid, beautiful. Another way you can store it is just putting it in one of these jars and then just use a spatula or just dip your finger in to get the product out and rub it all over. If you found this video beneficial, show your support by subscribing and leave a comment with what product you think I should address next. I always appreciate all your suggestions and love reading your comments, so thank you for watching.